So sometimes you want to cook some meat or some poultry or some fish or maybe some veggies, but you don't want to fire up your oven or set up the barbecue or mess up the stove doing some grilling in, in that method. So what do you do? Well, I'm going to be reviewing a product that you plug into the wall that gets up to an incredibly high temperature and it's great for searing meat, poultry, fish, and veggies. And then you're done in just a few minutes. It's behind me here, and I'm gonna go into the details. Hey, it's High Tech Dad, and welcome to my channel where I review a variety of products, mainly tech products, but it's products and gadgets and gizmos that you use around the home, maybe the home office, even at work or on the go. I do fix it videos and how to videos. And today I'm in the kitchen and I'm going to be looking at the Luma infrared steak grill. And this is it right here. We're going to be going through sort of the, the setup and how to get it ready for the first use. Then I'm going to actually try to cook something on it and make sure that I don't burn down everything or set off the smoke alarms. Kind of interesting. There's no kind of door here. And this is the entire device. And it's got very simple controls that I'll walk through. I'll give you some tips on things. And let me say this right now. I'm not a gourmet chef. I do not have a Michelin star. I'm just going to kind of wing it. And a lot of other people have been doing reviews of like grilling a steak or something like that. I'm going to take a little different approach. I'm going to do some veggies, maybe some chicken, and let's see how this thing does. Stay tuned. All right, so let's see what is inside the box. This is the Luma Infrared Steak Grill. You can see the box is not too big. Some of the features on here, steak ready in five minutes. We're going to definitely test that out. It's got a small portable counter uh, design, so obviously smaller than what's in the box here. Heats up to 1,450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that is hot, so can't wait to test that out. And it's got a 60-minute 60, 60 timer. So ugh, let's see what's inside the box. Always be careful cutting these open. Never know what's underneath directly. Also, you don't want to slice your hand or your finger. So, got this undone here. And immediately inside, you see a manual that goes through all the safety and features, and it's got multiple languages. Hopefully, there's some recipes in there. If not, I'm going to be looking for some good grilling recipes. Looks like this is a heavy uh, like cast iron grill. And it looks like this may be a handle that connects in it to allow you to take things in and out. So I'll put that aside. And then you have the actual Luma packed inside. So I'm going to actually put this down. It's too bad that there's styrofoam and not something a little bit more environmentally conscious, but maybe I can just lift this out uh, easily. It is a little bit heavy. So hopefully my head is not in this video. Putting the box to the side. Here you can see the packaging. I'm probably destroying the styrofoam. Yep, destroyed the styrofoam. And then here is the Luma grill itself. And you can see it's very simple. It's got, uh, let's get that out of the way. It looks like there's a fan on the bottom for venting. It's got one control, a readout here. It's got a tray that you can use, maybe a drip pan, and obviously the power cord, and it's got the heating elements up in here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then on the top, looks like it's vented and there are no vents in the back, but it does look like there, there is a power button on the side. And of course I need to probably take this grease pan out. This grease pan is out of the way. And so here is the power cord or the power on off button on the back. So next up is testing it all out. Okay, so I already did the unboxing video earlier. I unpacked this uh, uh, about a week ago and I just haven't had time to set it all up, but I wanted to sort of show it in place right now and what you get with it. So first of all, you have this cast iron 
sort of grill here. It's, it's pretty heavy duty. There's only one way for it to go in. You need to have this facing out inside our various uh, rack levels here. And it depends on the type of meat that you are cooking. So like they say up at the very top here, and there's a handy um, important notes of operation um, that I'm gonna be going through. But they say that the, the top part is for searing, the bottom part is, or the middle part is more for grilling. And then the bottom is for keeping warm and cooking vegetables. So I'm probably going to be using the middle for the chicken that I'm going to be cooking and the lower part for grilling some, some vegetables. I'm going to see if I can do some fajitas really quickly. Um, so that's the, the cast iron grill. They always say to wash everything with nothing abrasive. So you can rinse it off with, uh, just some warm water and that sort of thing. The other important thing here is the drip tray. Now, with this particular one, they tell you to fill it up with water. There is even a little icon on here that says water and drops. So you want to fill it up so that when anything is dripping from the, the grill itself, it goes down in here and doesn't go into the bottom of the, the Luma because if you don't have water in here or you don't have the drip pan in here, it's going to smoke and you're going to set off those smoke alarms that I was talking about. So you put the drip pan filled with water on the lowest level and that's where that goes. The other things that come with the unit is obviously instruction manual and important notes of operation. So I already talked about the grease collection tray. If you don't have water in here, it's the, the Luma is going to shut off because it will sense that it is overheating. So you need to be sure that you do that. Then lastly, I had fun trying to figure out how exactly this thing works. So it's basically the handle. You do not want to grab either of these things when it's hot. And a note to any families or people that have little ones around, as I said, there is no glass here. So you want to keep it up away from little hands. You don't want someone putting their hand on here and burning themselves. So obviously when you're doing this, have some supervision. This little thing, it just basically slides in and then you can pull things out. I'm not going to grab it, but basically you have it here. It's like a little pizza tray or something like that. It slides back in and you use the same thing with the drip pan a little bit easier because it's not as heavy. And I was kind of curious about what this little notch is. And yes, it is a bottle opener because you're probably going to get a little thirsty and need a nice cold adult beverage um as you're doing this this uh grilling and searing process so that is what that is for it's not for lifting it out so let's go through some of the other safety things i'm going to actually pick up the manual and read through it so that i don't leave anything out okay i'm going to read through some of the other uh assembly and installation instructions because it is kind of important to know um, where you can put this and how you have to set it up. So you want to make sure that it isn't too close to any other um, devices that heat up, like hot plates or heating tubes, whatever that is. That's what it says here. Um, you want to make sure that it is in a nice ventilated area. So I have it by a window. Hopefully that'll, that'll help. Then they also say that you need to have at least six inches on both sides so that um, it's, it's not being sort of trapped in and, and heating up too much. And then you need to have 20 inches, probably about that high um, on top. There, there are some vents here and I'm gonna measure the sort of the temperature when it's on and, and when it's off. Um, but you can't, for example, put this underneath uh, on a counter underneath a cabinet because it will heat up the cabinet. So they say at least 20 inches and that's, you know, a little less than two feet. So it's, you got to have a lot of space in there. 
And then it does say, yes, do not put underneath a wall cabinet or in a corner. So you need to have it adequately ventilated. And you want to keep it away from curtains and tablecloths. And then for the first use, they say to actually turn it on on high with everything cleaned in here. I'm going to do that and do some temperature measurements before we add any food in here. So um, that's pretty much the setup. It's, it's uh, quite nice looking. The, the Luma got an easy control. The on off switch is in the back. Um, so we'll plug it in, we'll fire that up and hopefully we'll be able to see the display on the camera and then let's sort of go from there. All right. So we're going to do the burn in test and I have already put some water in the tray. There's nothing else in here. Plugged it in. I do have just sort of a, a really cheap, uh, thermal surface and forehead thermometer here that I'll do some some little tests um, to see what the temperatures are. Um, I'm gonna turn it on. And so it beeps, the display turns on, and let's do some quick temperatures right now. So right now for surface, it's saying 65.2 degrees inside, maybe 64, 65. On the top here, it's about 71 degrees. There is some in the sun here, and that's obviously warmer, that's about 86. Just figure I'd do the temperature 69 degrees, so yeah, so let's fire this thing up. You're supposed to run it for like 10 minutes. So to the power switch is on, I click this and I'm going to set it at the highest temperature, which is 1,450 degrees Fahrenheit. That is pretty hot. And there is a um, 10 minute time set on here. So you can simply click the button here to adjust and I guess I turned it on so it's starting to fire up it's already saying it's like almost at 100 degrees it's gonna run for like 10 minutes so let's see if we can get a, a surface reading inside it says it's at 71 it's already at 118 130 143 so it's heating up pretty quickly 161 trying to keep it in the same spot it's not too loud there is some air coming out of the top, which is fairly cool. 71 degrees on that right now. 73 around this area. Let's check inside. Oh, it's already off the charts on this. It says it's high. So I need to get a, uh, a really nice thermal imaging scanner. So if anyone wants to uh, recommend any, please leave a comment. It'd be nice to actually see sort of the heat output. But the most important thing here is to understand how hot the outside is because again, you don't wanna burn yourself. It's gonna be hot here, it already is. Um, let's see what the surface temperature is right now, 73. So not much has changed on the surface temperature. The back that was in the sun is about 79. The vent is actually 70. So it's, it's nice and cool, the side 68. And then here, it's already too high. I can start to see some of the red from the uh, infrared grill, which is up on the top. There are no other heating elements around here. So we're gonna just sort of let this heat up. The temperature right now says it's almost at a thousand degrees. So I'm not gonna stick my hand in there. It's hit a thousand degrees. The timer itself has not started. It's still set for 10 minutes. So basically once it hits that, 1450 degrees. I'm going to let it just sort of sit here for the 10 minutes. I'll watch it. You can definitely smell some burn off right now going on. Luckily I have the window open, but still cool to the touch. I'm putting my hand on this. And even though it is at 1200 degrees and climbing, the hot spot is only where it's been sitting in the sun. And the back is, is cool. The sides are cool. So this is very insulated. Almost there. Just going to wait till it hits that 1450. And you can see how fast this thing actually heats up. And you can hear there is fan noise, but it's not too bad. Almost there. About to hit 1450. Boom. 
1450 and the countdown timer has started. So we're at 954. So I'm going to let it run, come back at the end and see how we're doing. All right. So I'm going handheld here so you can get some close ups. You can see 1450, about a little less than four minutes remaining on the burn off. Here's the inside and you can see those elements up there are super hot and nice and red. So again, no other heating elements, but it is uh, radiating heat out of here. I can definitely feel it looking good. All right, so the initial burn off is done. The fan is still running. It's still pretty warm, still cool to the touch. The vents are a little warm, but not too bad. Um, but yes, that's all finished while it was doing this burn off initial run. I did take a look at an energy meter that, um, I have, and I did notice a spike in my electrical consumption. So a little over a thousand Watts. So that's expected. This thing is all electric and it is pumping out a lot of heat. But when you think about it, you're only running it for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on what you're cooking. So that's pretty much um, as is expected. But everything's shut off by itself. Uh, temperature turned off. The timer obviously is off and it automatically shut down. But I do recommend that you stay present if you are cooking food so that you can make sure that you're not burning anything and things aren't smoking. All right, it's time to start cooking. So I have some chicken cutlets here that I put a little bit of seasoning on. One thing about searing that I, I read about is you don't want to put stuff like basil or leafy oregano or something like that because it'll burn when it's underneath neath the searing um, element in there. So I coated it with a little bit of olive oil spray and this is not a cooking video. Um, and I put on like garlic powder and cayenne powder and, um, some cumin and some other seasoning to make it kind of fajita ish. I realize that fajitas oh. usually are done on a pan. And then I have some peppers and onions here, uh, that I put a little bit of seasoning on. So the goal here is we're going to probably use the, the middle rack here. Obviously, this is cool. Going to sear the, the, the chicken. You don't put it, the, the chicken you don't put very high up. You don't want to put it too close to the top. And there is a note that says, when searing, if you're using the very top level here, you do not want to do it for more than one minute on a side. So keep that in, in mind. But I'm going to be doing it at almost the lowest level. <laughs> For the the chicken cutlets and then once that is done I'm gonna do the uh, peppers and onions at an even lower level the other thing I'm not gonna do it at the 1450 degrees Fahrenheit because I think I'll probably burn the the living crap out of all this stuff so probably put it at a thousand degrees see how quickly we can do it and it's probably only gonna be like two minutes aside so I'm gonna have to watch that carefully um, but again, you can adjust everything right here. Another thing to note, if you're doing steaks and things like that, that have grease dripping off, when you pull this out, it will drip. So you may want to put some foil or something down at the bottom to protect your counter or your cutting board. I don't expect the chicken to have too much uh, drip off. Um, the other thing that you could probably do is pull the, the splash tray, the drip tray out a little bit as you pull it out, but I'm probably not going to be doing that. So let's get going and get this, this uh, cooking. The last thing, when you take this out to flip it over, flip over whatever meat or fish or poultry that you have, you want to put it on some sort of a fire safe surface. So you did probably a wooden cutting board is probably okay. If you don't mind it, maybe getting some burn marks in it. I would not put it on a plastic cutting board. It'll probably melt it. Um, and I would avoid some of the countertops if you don't know what their temperature rating is. Um, 
don't do that. So I actually have um, a metal griddle that I'm going to be using when I take it out and put it on there uh, just to play it safe. So let's get cooking. All right, so I've already put the cutlets onto the cast iron grill. I'm going to fire up the Luma right now. First, I'm going to lower it down to maybe 1050. And I'm going to actually set the cook time kind of high because I don't, it doesn't really matter how long I do it for. I'm setting it for 20 minutes. And uh, so let's fire that up. And it's starting to go. And I'll come back and we'll let this preheat for about three minutes once it hits that desired temperature. And then we'll start cooking. All right, so we're a little over over a thousand degrees. It's been preheating about three minutes. And I'm going to very carefully try to put this on the third rack from the bottom. So hopefully this will just slide right in. There it is. Make sure the drip pan's in. So now it's cooking. So the other thing that I have, just in case, to take a look at the temperature of the uh, chicken once it's cooked, because you don't want to undercook chicken. So see how this all does. So I had to go free form here. You can see everything's in there. Heating elements going. You can definitely smell the spices on there. All right, so I am going to take this out and flip them over. See how we're doing here. Always takes a little bit of time getting used to this stuff. Let's see. So it looks like the stuff towards the back is already cooking pretty well. So let's flip those over. I'm starting to curl a little bit. But they are slowly cooking, so that's good. So I'll probably need to do more than just uh, two minutes aside. These have been going probably three minutes or so. But yeah, so they need definitely more heat, especially the ones in the front. So we'll have to play around with this and, and learn more. So hotter in the back. Let's get this back in on the grill now. Again, going on the third level here. Easy enough to take in and out. There isn't a way to adjust the temperature once it's going, as far as I know but you can adjust how long you want something to cook uh, by simply dialing it and you'll hear the, the beep acknowledging that. But if you need to set a higher temperature, you probably have to turn it off, set the temperature and turn it back on. So I actually did just that. I uh, turned it off. I set the temperature a little bit higher so that potentially we would cook this faster um, reset the time as well so it's quickly getting up to the desired temperature and it looks like things are, are cooking a little bit better may take this out one more time and then rearrange some of the ones that were in the front put those in the back and switch them around okay so I'm gonna take it out and rearrange these really quickly Gotta make sure that I have a good grip on here but they're definitely cooking a lot faster now that I raised the, the temperature so yeah I'm gonna just sort of put all the, big one, the ones that were in the back now in the front and see how we do that way. So always a learning process. And it sure smells good, getting hungry. Okay. So flip them around and put it back in. And again, this is at a higher temperature now, still sticking to the third level. Away we go. Okay, so they're definitely cooking a lot faster now with the higher temperature. I'm going to give them one more flip just to be safe, and I'm going to do some internal... Uh, temperature tests on the the cutlets here. So a chicken, you want it to be about 165 degrees. And remember, once you take it out, it will continue to to cook. So let's just do a really quick check here. So I am at about 145 degrees on a couple. The ones to the back are almost there. They're at about 151. So uh, definitely going to cook it just a little bit longer. I'll flip them. And uh, the neat thing about when you're working with meat and searing things is that you are going to create sort of like a, a hard shell on the top that'll sort of sear in all the juices of meat. So I'm going to try at some point doing some steak or something like that to truly try the, the searing method. But for now, we're just doing the, 
the chicken and then we'll try with the veggies. So they'll probably put it in another few minutes here and then uh, test out the veggies. Okay, they're really sizzling now. I don't want to overcook them because that sort of defeats the purpose. I don't want any dry chicken, but I do want to check the temperature. So I'm going to take it out now, do another temperature check, and if we're done, then move on to the, the veggies. So they're looking pretty good here. And let's do a quick temperature check. So this is at 160. Okay, that one's cooked. Yep, so the ones towards the back, that's the hot spot. The ones towards the front, not quite as hot, but they will continue to keep cooking. It also depends on the, the size. So I'm actually going to take the ones on the back off and then move some of these other ones around and then get this finished. Okay, so chicken is done. Going to set it aside, let it, let it rest a little. And I have put all of the peppers and onions onto the pan. So one thing to note, this is great for cooking smaller meals, maybe for two people, maybe three. Um, had to really load it up with a lot of stuff on here. Uh, we'll see how it cooks. Putting it at the second to lowest level. And I'm just going to sort of let it go. I still have it set at uh, 1350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll see if this gives it a, a, a nice cook or if it burns the top. I'll be rotating all the peppers and onions periodically. So let's see how it does. Here's the final product of the chicken. And we have the peppers cooking right now. So we'll see how those turn out. All right, so the peppers and onions, I think, are pretty much done. Um, I'm going to take them out. In hindsight, I think that maybe for doing veggies, it might be good with zucchini and squash and something that can lay a little bit flatter. Um, and something like uh, the, the peppers here, are a little bit harder because they do fall through the grill but they do look nicely cooked and it definitely smells good i think it'll all work really well together so i'm going to turn this thing off let it start cooling down just push the button hope you like that review and that mini cooking lesson again i'm not a chef i'm just trying to test this thing out to see how good the luma actually is so infrared cooking it's really really hot 1450 degrees type of hot will be great for searing those steaks especially if you like a medium rare um, i'm definitely going to try it out with some bigger pieces of chicken maybe with some shrimp and some uh, other type of fish maybe some salmon in there i'm getting really hungry just making this video so hope you like the review Please, if you do like these types of reviews, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, ask me any questions that you have, as long as it's not about cooking, because again, I'm not an expert. But this is a pretty nice device to have. Um, you can quickly cook steaks, you can quickly cook other types of meat, and you get it at a temperature that you couldn't achieve with a normal oven. This is like professional quality here. So if you want to read more about it, you can go to my website, and that's at hightechdad.com. If you have any questions, I'm on social media. Just search for High Tech Dad. You can head over to my Facebook page, and that's at facebook.com forward slash HTD blog. And happy cooking. I hope you like the, seeing the Luma in action. And let me know what kind of recipes you think might be really good to try out here. Maybe I'll do a follow-up review doing some other recipes. Again, not a cook. I'm a gadget guy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.